five, four, three. Hi, everybody. Dugras here with Dugras Reports, reporting live from my house. Today is Saturday, April 6th, 2024. Welcome to Saturday Morning Live. Glad to have each and every one of you on board, or if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay. We're going to go ahead and dive right on into the prepared content for today. And to be more specific, we have some Dugras data points. These are just uh, data points or things I've observed or have found in my own credit or things that interest me in the world of credit from the past week or so. First up, dun, 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 dun. big news on the Aeroplan card issued by Chase and hat tip to Matt Clausen, who first broke this news, or at least broke it in the place where I saw it for the first time. Uh, Aeroplan has a feature called Pay Yourself Back, where you can indirectly cash out your points at a 1.25x modifier. And we had known for a while their website says there's no limit on the amount of points you can cash out between now and the end of June this year. The original post said that after 2023, it was going to be capped at 50,000 points a year. Well, uh, as broken by Matt Clausen, that has actually been extended through the end of this year. So there's no more language about a 50,000 point cap. It just says you can cash out points on an unlimited basis. Uh, and I say cash out. What I mean is pay yourself back on travel purchases, 1.25x modifier on travel using your Chase Aeroplan card between now and the end of this year, the end of 2024, December 31st, 2024. So what happens after 2024? I don't really know, but it's a lot cleaner and neater to go through the end of a calendar year. So I'm pretty stoked about that for a couple reasons. One is I think it's just a good way to use points to pay for not everything, but a lot of things that I would not have been able to pay for previously, um, such as let's say, uh, well, I'll just use a real life example. When we went to Sweden last year, we took two different boat tours, one on the ocean, one on the river slash canal. And I put them both on the Aeroplan card, paid myself back. That's something I normally wouldn't be able to pay for points with. So that was a good option. Um, I have used a restaurant inside a hotel on more than one occasion to get a meal for myself and or my family and um, charge it to the hotel. And therefore, it codes as travel. So you can use points to pay yourself back in that way as well. So if, like me, your goal is to keep your travel expenses low enough that it's not coming out of your family budget that helps you do that. Actually, my goal is that travel always pays for itself uh, from bank account bonuses, cashback rewards, those kind of things for the parts I can't pay for with points. So now with this, I can pay for more with points. The second reason why it is a good deal or good idea is um, if you transfer 50,000 points or more, you always get a 10% bonus. I believe you can do that three times a year, but please don't quote me on that. Um, and then twice within the last 12 months, Chase has done a 20% bonus. So if you factor, uh, when transferring from Chase to Aeroplan, so if you factor in the 10% always bump on 50K or more, you factor in the 20, that's 1.3. They stack, but they don't multiply times each other. So take the 1.3 times the 1.25, you have 1.625. So the ability to redeem your chase points on any travel, including hotel, restaurants, get a bag of chips at the hotel, whatever, uh, at 1.625 chase points, uh, 1.625 cents per point with chase points is actually better than the Sapphire Reserve. So I think that's pretty awesome. Hello to all 19 people that are on board. Please click the thumbs up button if you haven't done that yet. Um, Mojo, Kiki, Juan Garcia, YouTube Experiment, Frugal Dad Finance, and John are all here and have greeted me and or each other. Um, Kiki says, good morning. Joining live this week from a main cabin extra seat on American Airlines. Oh, so you're in the air right now. 
Uh, and later says, I'll be in Miami soon for a Marlins baseball game. Very cool. Well, thank you, everyone. If you can hear me just fine, if you'd let me know in the comments, that would be appreciated. Next, Dugras data point worth mentioning is the New Orleans meetup. So uh, the second annual YouTube creator meetup for people in the points and miles space will be in New Orleans. And we've known for a while that it's going to be on Labor Day weekend. So I believe Chad from Chad's Money Minutes is, is kind of heading it up loosely this year. And uh, we knew it was Labor Day weekend, but we didn't know exactly. Well, now we have the exact time and date. It will be on Saturday, August 31st. And the meetup itself will be at 5 p.m. local time on Saturday. Although my speculation is most people aren't flying home until Monday. So uh, there will be some chances before and after. There was some discussion on the Anthony Venture Discord. Thanks to Anthony for hosting that. Um, about possibly doing some other activities. And just an idea I had was like, um, you know, if you go to like a conference for work or something, they have different tracks. Like, you know, they might have a track for teachers and a track for administrators and a track for janitors. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. We could have like the meetup track for history nerds, the, the track for foodies, the track for people that are into live music. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't be the live music or foodie guy. I'm I'm just kind of a hamburger Joe, uh, but I am a history lover, so I could I could lead the history nerds somewhere. I know the World War II Museum is there in New Orleans, so that is definitely on my tentative plan, and I'll keep you posted as I find out more information. Thank you to uh, Charles and John and Mo letting me know they can all hear me just fine. Uh, Charles. Cusick, don't believe we've seen each other before. At least I haven't seen you on here. Thank you for joining. Glad to have you here. And I also wanted to mention that Juan Garcia has joined as a Dugras diehard just within the last 48 hours. So thank you for doing that. Quality Control Man 2000 is here. And he's a diehard as well. A lot of people talking about Marlins baseball. Uh, Frugal Dad got his kids into World War II history. That's great. All right. Um, the Chase Freedom Flex, which I don't have with me right now, or do I? Chase Freedom Flex has unlocked a new superpower here uh, starting on April 1st temporarily because the category uh, for the quarter, second quarter 2024, is dining. And Freedom Flex already gets 3x on dining. Now, the way they post that is your 1x everywhere plus 2 bonus. But given we have the 5x on restaurants, what that functionally means is you're going to get 7x this quarter on the Freedom Flex. So unless you've got a sign-up bonus or some other unique situation, odds are the Freedom Flex will be your best bet on a dining card uh, during this quarter. Just wanted to let you all know about that so that it was on the radar. Sam K is here, my friend from the United Kingdom, who I think is five hours ahead of us on Greenwich Mean Time right now. So around 2.40 p.m. or so. Good to see you. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Next up, another meetup to discuss, the Ziegler meetup. Now, this is my personal meetup, and it's probably just going to be me. If somebody else shows up, that's great. But I am going to clue you into what I'm talking about. And for some people, this will be old hat. And for others, this will be new information. I'm going to share my screen. If the computer gets a little laggy, I apologize. In two days, those of us here in North America are going to experience a total solar eclipse. Well, not all of us, but many of us. And this picture shows the path of totality where the moon will block the sun completely and it's going to move from Texas up towards New England. You'll see that little red dot there. That little red dot is the town of Ziegler, Illinois, which unfortunately is covered by my face at the moment. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but you can take my word for it. There's a little town not too far from Carbondale and Murfreesboro called Ziegler. I will be there in two days on April 8th. Uh, it's about an hour and 47 minutes from the St. Louis area. 
And two o'clock on the button is when the full blackout happens. Ziggler has, I don't know if it's Ziggler, Ziegler, has this little circle right in the middle of town. And that's where I will be. So see the water tower, see the middle, go right between the two. There's a bench right about here. And that's where you'll find me. Uh, in theory, right around 1.30 p.m. on Monday, April 8th. This is what it looks like. I don't see any tall trees. This is facing the direction it'll come from. So we should have a very patriotic moment if they've got the flags up and all that. And here's the water tower just to show there's some porta potties if you need to use the facilities. Whoops, that's for the main event. Stop sharing my screen. I will try my best to live stream from there. Some of the concerns that I have is uh, on the Cyclone Fanatic message board, which is for Iowa State football, but they also talk about other stuff. Um, a lot of people are saying things like the state of Arkansas has declared a, a state emergency because they think there's going to be 4 million people coming into town or something like that. Um, People are saying things like, however long it normally takes you to drive, take that times three or four because traffic is going to be so bad. You might have gas shortages. The cell phone towers might go down, those kind of things. So I'm going to try to live stream, but if I can't, I apologize. I will just record it locally on my phone if I'm unable to live stream. And uh, I will be there by 1.30. That's my plan. But if for some reason traffic is like apocalyptically bad, I might just have to pull over on a gravel road and uh, look at the sun there. I have a paper map, something as a child of the 80s and 90s I'm very familiar with. So this is my fallback GPS in the event that the cell phone towers all go down and the GPS goes down and we have some sort of Mad Max post-apocalyptic scenario or something like that. So my plan is to be there, but who knows what's going to happen. Hey, Sam K dropped me a super chat of five pounds towards a McDonald's to the legend. Thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate that. Sam is one of my diehards as well. And uh, that brings me to actually the next point. I wanted to uh, mention the new Dugras diehards. These are people that have joined within the last month since I last read them off. I think if there's duplicates, I apologize. Uh, so these folks have joined my one and only channel membership level. It's called Dugras Diehard. Evan R, Kevin P, QC Man 2000, Manuel Jimenez, Anabnet 87, Tom Graber, and Juan Garcia. Thank you to each of you for joining. So to be uh, specific, what is a Dugras Diehard? Well, uh, that's my one and only channel membership. It's only $3 a month. There's no commitment. You can join and leave at any time. It will get you not only priority replies and early access to videos, but most importantly, I do have probably around 30 members only videos on my channel. As an example, today's topic is Hilton point valuations. Sorry, folks. Had a small stroke or something. Hilton point valuations. Um, if you want a super nerdy, like lots of math valuation, uh, you have to become a diehard because I do have a members only video I released two days ago on that topic of how I did the math. If you like lots of math, sometimes those really nerdy or personal things don't play well in the YouTube algorithm, which is why they're behind the membership wall. Since I have memberships enabled, I also have super chats and super thanks. So if you want to help me buy a computer that has less of that lag problem, I am saving up for an Apple MacBook or something similar. Sam K just gave me five pounds towards the fund, which uh, translates to 625 roughly US dollars. Um, and I'm saving up for that. I've got, you know, ooh, I don't know, around 350 ish dollars in that fund right now. And uh, once I get up to 800 to 1,000, I'll get that new computer, which will help improve the channel. Thank you, everyone. All right. Let me catch up on the chat here and anything that needs to be addressed. I do like it when I see each of you kind of talking to each other. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm going to get to a question. Uh, so if you don't have your question answered, please don't take offense. It's just for the sake of production value and time. But it's great when you're talking to each other about baseball or those kind of things. Uh, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. 
Um, Key asks, how do you like the Philips Hue lights behind you? Do you have any automation setups? I like them, but I don't have any automation, uh, if I remember, and sometimes I forget. I will try to pick a color every Saturday that has something to do with the topic. So like the Hilton logo is blue, so I chose blue today. But yeah, I do like them. Uh, baseball history saying hi. Okay. John says there's an awesome world war one museum in Kansas city. The first time I went, I was basically speechless. The rest of the day made a big impact on me. I'm planning to go to the world war one museum Sunday, John, maybe we can go at the same time. Uh, Sam K is at three 42 PM Greenwich mean time. Some people talking about restaurants in the Miami area. John says he wants to go watch the solar eclipse, but hotel rooms were insane. Yeah, I didn't try to get a hotel room in Carbondale or Cape Girardeau down in Southern Illinois. I'm staying in the suburbs of St. Louis, and I'm going to drive down there Sunday night and then wake up, not real early, but like 8 o'clock a.m. on Monday and start driving down. It's only supposed to be like an hour and 47 minutes, but I'm going to allow at least three hours, maybe more to get there just in case. Maybe I should allow like four hours. I'll, I'll put some thought into that. Um, I was able to book uh, a Hilton for something like 43,000 Hilton points plus about 100 bucks in cash. And I'll come back to that in a few moments. I've also booked a Best Western, which was cheaper as a cash rate. And now that I don't have to worry about running out of you know, like I, I was thinking I had to use all my aeroplan points by July 1st. Now I don't have to. So I feel a little looser about using them um, or the other way around. I was like, I need to use them all up now. I don't need to. So I don't know. Do I do the fun of the best Western? Cause it's new. It's actually slightly higher rated than the Hilton, which is a Hampton Inn. Uh, or do I do the old reliable Hampton Inn? Something I was thinking about with the Hampton Inn is I also have a, Oh, did I bring it up with me? One moment. A Dugras data point I forgot to write down is uh, back on first quarter, before the quarter ended, I used my Hilton Surpass card to, better cover the number here, get a Hilton gift certificate or gift card. Um, Anthony Venture first turned me on to that. If you don't have Hilton stays, just buy a $50 gift card. One thing I would mention is that it was sh ordered and shipped on March 18th, and it didn't get to me till like April 2nd or 3rd, so it took you know, more than 15 days to arrive, just FYI. Um, but I could try to use that Hilton gift card at checkout, take $50 off, use my Surpass card, also take another $50 off and use two of my Surpass quarterly credits in kind of a roundabout way. So that's something I'm thinking about. Put a comment in the chat. Let me know if you think I should go with the Best Western Aeroplan trick or if I should go with the Hilton gift card trick. Um... Let's see, still getting through the comments here. Some people are trying to visit a bunch of stadiums. John says, luckily the full solar eclipse happened here in Kansas City in 2017, so I got to see it. YouTube experiment says, a map, what's that? Just kidding. <laughs> John says he was seeing rooms for $500 and $600 plus a night at a Super 8, nothing available in the past path of the eclipse. Yeah, and I got the Best Western for like $270 for two nights. And it's actually a Best Western Plus or something like that. So, but again, that's because it's two hours north of the path of totality. Um, I am a little concerned like a third of St. Louis is going to try to drive down that morning and that'll get very, very crowded. But again, I'm, I'm good with geography. I've always liked maps. I've looked this over and I've got the back roads picked off. So I'm going to pick out uh, $305 for two nights at the Best Western Plus near St. Louis. Fingers crossed I'll be okay. I'll take a couple ham or turkey sandwiches with me. Um, Kiki asked this, when I get an ad mid video, does this help give back to your channel? If so, how long should I watch? Um, that's a great question. Thank you, Kiki. Um, by the way, should I call you Key or Kiki? Because it says Key, but your channel's Kiki Adventures, or maybe you don't care and either one is fine. Um, 
yes, watching videos does help my channel because now that I have over a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, I am monetized. So when you see the ad, a portion of that's going to me. Um, I have a different channel called Dugras, not Dugras Reports, just Dugras that's about mattress reviews. And um, actually, yeah, that's something I should mention. Um, but I was monetized that in the past. And I had read some things that said, um, in order for me to make revenue, you have to watch at least 12 seconds of the video. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's always been my rule of thumb. If it's a supporter that I want to support, you know, don't skip the ad the second it comes up, try to watch at least 12 seconds worth. Obviously, the more you watch, the more money I get. But if you want to support me at least some, my rule of thumb is always watch at least 12 seconds. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is uh, YouTube done me dirty a little bit. So my other channel, the old channel Dugras about mattress reviews, I got an email about uh, mm, early March, late February, something like that. That says like, we notice you haven't posted a video in a long time and your watch hours are getting kind of low. So uh, unless you bring that back up within the next 60 days, we're going to cut you off. Well, I made one video, but it wasn't very popular. It only had like 32 views. Sure enough, April or March 31st, they cut me off. So Dugras, the mattress review channel, is no longer monetized, which is kind of a bummer, but Dugras reports is on an uphill slope. So I think I'll be okay. Anthony Ventures here. Hi, Anthony. And ask this question. Can I ask why the eclipse is so popular this year? Seems like most never really cared for years and years prior to this one. So I can only tell you what I've read. And I've read that it's because the path of totality goes over more populated areas. Like in the past, sometimes it like clips Florida or like the Northwest. But this one goes right across the heart of the country. So it's easier for more people to see it. That's my understanding. Um, it might also just be, you know, things like Facebook and Twitter hype it up more now than they did five years ago. Um, Kiki also says COVID changes people, Anthony. Anthony's excited that I'm talking about Hilton gift cards. <laughs> Thanks for the hat tip. Um, now the song Total Eclipse of the Heart is in my head, says QC Man. John says, I'm good with geography too. As a kid, I'd look at my dad's atlas, a book of maps, and wonder what it was like there, what did it look like, and what people were like, etc. I studied maps like crazy. Yeah, my dad had this big, thick, hardbound atlas from like Reader's Digest um, when I was a kid, and I looked at that all the time. Charles Cusick says, I saw your U.S. Bank retention episode. Did you ever get the missing altitude points? Um, no, I got the customer happiness points. I got a 10,000 point retention offer and the 5,000 customer satisfaction points you saw in the video. I actually called them last week for something completely unrelated. And I asked just because I was curious and they said, we're still working on it. Sorry, no word yet. Um, a huge chunk might be cloudy, John. So here's the glasses that I ordered. I can't see a bloody thing, but this is what they look like. So make sure you have uh, glasses that are approved by ISO. That's the International Standards Organization. I have read there are some counterfeits out there that could damage your vision. And I am not an optometrist or a sun lookerologist. So in the words of Sledge, do your own research about which glasses to get. Hey, speaking of Sledge, <laughs> he's here. How you doing? And says, uh, have you ever considered applying for the luxury card gold card? Um, if, if I'm not sure what that is, is that the same as the MasterCard gold card? The one I made a video of like four years ago, completely making fun of if it's the same one I'm thinking of, no, I've never considered it. It's a complete and total ripoff, but it's, if it's something else, I apologize. Okay. So with that in mind, okay. Yes. Yeah, Sledge was pulling my leg. <laughs> Let's dive into the main event. Today's main event is Hilton Points Revisited. So back uh, early this year, in fact, it was the first week in January, I did a topic on Hilton and I felt like it wasn't quite thorough enough. So I want to come back around and revisit it here. And I thought, what better time to do it than during a live stream? 
I've actually been working my way up towards doing a standalone video on the value of Hilton points and just generally what they're worth and how to use them and those sorts of things. That's not what this video is about. It's more just kind of thinking through the process of valuing things. And this would be in the same vein as the topic I did on choice points um, a month or two ago. Just if you are into points and miles and you want to cherry pick rather than just relying on the points guy or frequent miler or someone like that to tell you what the points are worth, what might that look like and how might that turn out? So I'm going to share my screen and let's dive in. Sorry about my allergies, folks. So we've got, I think, eight examples or 10 examples of Hilton properties. These are all places that I have stayed or places that I would like to stay and be willing to stay. My standard is the Google reviews should be four stars or better. Sometimes if it's like a 3.8 or 3.9, I might let it slide. Uh, but I generally like to see a pattern kind of like this, where the ones are pretty small and then a decent size four and really big fives. Um, example number one, the home to suites in the Tallahassee State Capitol, or it's called Tallahassee State Capitol. It's not in the Capitol building. Just Tallahassee is the capital of Florida, and this is close to that building. Um my family flew into Tallahassee many years ago before I was into points and miles on our way to Panama City. On April 13th and 14th of this year, you can get a one queen bed studio room. And for that one night, the cash price is $497. I don't know why the cash price is so high. Maybe there's an event going on of some kind. Uh, if I remember correctly, Florida State University is there in Tallahassee. Um, instead of paying $497, you could pay 40,000 points, which is only 1.2 cents per point. So that's pretty good, I would say. That's over one cent per point. This is a bit of an anomaly. I have found that with lots of hotel chains that have dynamic pricing, even though the pricing is dynamic, it seems like when there's a holiday or a celebration or a special event or something like that, a lot of times the cash price will go up um, quite a bit more than or earlier than the points price. So sometimes you can get a good uh, points price. Juan Garcia says, hotels are really expensive in Tallahassee, especially when uh, UM-FSU football weekend. Um, Oh, UM, University of Miami. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I would imagine. Obviously, this is in April, so it wouldn't be that. And basketball's over, so maybe baseball, softball, gymnastics. I don't know. Something else is going on. Next example, the Gale South Beach. This is part of the Curio Collection. And South Beach, in this case, refers to the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area. I thought of this because... Um, Uncle Luke from Luke's Points and Miles is always raving about the Conrad in Fort Lauderdale. So I looked up places in the Miami area, and this was the best one that I found. Oddly enough, I looked at two different dates, somewhat at random, and that particular Conrad was worse than this. It was less than half a cent per point. This has 4.1 stars on Google on the night of April 13th. It would be a two queen signature room for a cash price of $538, or instead you could pay 90,000 points, and that comes out to 0.59 cents per point. This is not right on the beach. If you look at the picture on the left, you can see their pool, which looks really swanky, and the beach is over there. It's about a block away, and it's got this really cool garden restaurant built in. Sledge likes Curio Properties. Juan says the Fort Lauderdale Conrad is right on the beach. Moving on. Um, so, yeah, I'd said each place is a place that I would either like to go or have been. I've not been to South Beach or Miami. Um, oh, hey, speaking of the devil, Luke is here. 
<laughs> um, I'll go back since we're all, all, since everyone that I talk about gets onto this live stream, apparently. <laughs> Glad to see you. Um, Luke says, I've stayed there. I took the whole family to that gale. Cool. Well, um, did you like it? They are partnered with another beachfront hotel to get all your chairs and towels. Yeah, I figured probably since it's just like a short block, if that, to walk there. Um, that Yeah, it looks like the kind of place I would I would really like to stay. I mean, whew, look at that pool. That looks crisp. Um, Washington, D.C. is a place that I'm going this summer. Now, the Conrad and the Embassy Suites are right across the street from each other. And uh, we're staying at the Embassy Suites. I really debated it, but with teenage boys, I think an Embassy Suites is a better fit in terms of the type of room and the type of food. Um, so let's talk about 4th of July. So if you stay the night of 4th of July, uh, you could get a One King Deluxe. This has 4.6 stars. Very good out of five on Google reviews. And you could pay $526, or you could pay 85,000 points. That comes out to 0 0.62 cents per point. So I'll be right across the street from there, from the Conrad. So I'll probably go over there and eat in their restaurant just to see what it's like at least once. The Hampton Inn in O'Fallon, Illinois. Well, where is O'Fallon, Illinois? That's the suburbs of St. Louis. So this would be, in theory, one of your options for going to see the solar eclipse. This particular one was sold out, so this is not where I'm staying, but I am going to stay in that general area. I've been to O'Fallon before. I actually stayed in a IHG property. I think it was a Holiday Inn. Um, but this looked pretty good if you're headed that direction. Looks pretty new. Oddly enough, the color scheme reminds me of a home to suites, but it is a Hampton Inn. 4.5 stars out of 5 on Google. And this is two nights, if you're staying the nights of April 7th through the 9th, which is actually, um, you know, peak eclipse viewing time before it sold out, or maybe it's open now. I haven't checked in about a week. It was $513 total. That's for two nights or 80,000 points. That's 0 0.64 cents per point. Uh, catching up on the comments, Filmo says, thinking about buying a crap ton of Hilton points right now, buy them at half a cent, redeem them at one cent. Seems like good mathing to me. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, one thing I would say is there is a cap on how many Hilton points you can buy every year. I'm thinking it's in the neighborhood of 180,000 or 160,000. If somebody knows, they can speak up and let me know. Icarus is here. Luke says, tiny rooms. This is at the Gale South Beach in Miami. Tiny rooms, cool rooftop pool. Um, Juan Garcia says South Beach is madness this time of year, although Miami Beach has a spring breakup initiative to curtail overcrowding. Uh, Sledge was in Miami a couple weeks ago. Traffic was insane. JP Knowledge says hi to everyone, and a bunch of people say hi back. Luke says he buys 160K every year to get 320K. Thanks, Luke. I think that's the cap. Moving on. Hello, Hawaii. Can I come over? Do any of you remember from your childhood, if you're roughly my age, the Garfield holiday specials? There was one that was Garfield in Hawaii. And that song was part of it. The Hawaii... Hawaiian Village Waikiki Resort. Uh, this was the best value I found during Christmas week. So how about uh, holidays in Hawaii? 4.3 stars out of 5 on Google reviews. That pool setup with those little cabanas looks pretty sweet. If you stay December 23rd through 26th and celebrate Christmas there, you can get a One King room. Uh, the night of the 3rd, 4th, 5th leaving on the sixth, that's three nights. That would be $1,948 if you paid cash. As an alternative, you can do 210,000 points and that comes out to 0 0.93 cents per point. So we're getting close to that one cent per point mark. Um, Luke was in Miami yesterday. Stan the Credit Frog has arrived. How you doing? 
Uh, oh, comments are coming in hot and heavy here. We got 38 people on board. I believe my most concurrent people ever at one time is 42. So maybe we can break that record and get up to 43. Uh, Stan says, I'm paying to get into the Dallas Fort Worth Capital One Labs today. Any must do's for those of you that have been there? I've been there. I guess just eat the food. I like the food. I find the little trays, the individual ser servings to be kind of weird. Um, all the players are in here. Hi, everyone. Cesar Joel has arrived. How you doing, brother? Appreciate you. Um, <laughs> just looking through the comments for things that are questions. Don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you. All right. So we talked about Hawaii. Somebody said... John said, I remember Elvis in Hawaii. I inherited my dad's Elvis record collection when he died. Well, sorry for your loss, uh, John. But glad that you got the records. Next up, the we went to Hawaii. Let's go to Alaska now. The Embassy Suites in Anchorage, Alaska. 4.3 stars out of 5 on Google reviews. If you go the night of August 23rd, you could get a two-queen suite mountain view room. And I think mountain view is a nice way of saying you don't look at the water. Instead, you look at the mountain. <laughs> um, that would be $811 for one night if you paid cash. But instead, you could pay 70,000 points, and that is 1.2 cents per point. I don't know what in the world is going on in Anchorage, Alaska on August 23rd and 24th, but that is an expensive price on a per night basis. That's more expensive than Hawaii. So, you know, because 800 times two would be 1600 times four would be tw uh, times three rather would be 2400. So, yeah, the, can someone tell me why Anchorage, Alaska is so stinking expensive on that night? And again, this is cherry picking. So a lot of the nights were half as much, only around four hundred dollars. There must be something going on in that time frame. Next up, we went from Hawaii to Alaska to Clinton, Iowa. I have been to Clinton, Iowa before. It's right on the Mississippi River where the state of Iowa kind of juts out like a pig's nose on the east side. It's right in the middle of that. I have an old video about the Lumber Mill Museum. You can look up if you're really interested. Um, but yeah, this is a Hampton Inn that always seems to come in at a really good value. Nothing fancy. It's just sort of a, I mean, look at the picture. It's just, just basic, but it's nice. 4.3 stars out of 5 on Google Reviews. It is right next to a casino. On the night of July 10th, you could stay in a One King room for $209 cash or 20,000 points. And that comes out to almost one cent per point on the button. Uh, let me catch up on the comments here. 43 people! We broke the record! Congratulations! The most concurrent people ever at one time in my live stream. 43. Thanks, everyone. Um, Luke says the food and beverage credit in Hawaii is clutch. Um, YouTube experiment mentions fifth night free. We'll get to that in just a few moments. I'm looking at people just talking to each other, which is fine. Keith S is on board. Hi, Keith says, I can't believe how expensive Hampton Inns are versus Waldorf Astoria's. I just booked a Hampton Inn for tonight for a friend who needed a place quickly, and it was 50,000 Hilton pesos for the night, which came to 0. 0.33 cents per point. Yes, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that when I do my kind of wrap up here. Um, Luke speculates there's a big dog sled race that night in Alaska. There might be. Um, Filmo says, cherry picking across the U.S. with Ducras. Cesar has his, and that's right, I am cherry picking. I will fully admit these are cherry picked rates. Cesar says, I got my flight and hotels booked for NOLA. Can't wait to see everyone again. Luke reminds everyone to hit the like button. Uh, JP says, in Anchorage, the halibut was out of the world. John can't wait to meet Cesar. Sledge stayed till the record was broken and now he's got to dip out. Well, I understand. Hey, Filmo, thank you for the super chat. Filmo dropped $5 towards my computer upgrade fund and says, congrats on the new Highmark, Doug. I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Filmo. You have been one of my most loyal followers. 
and I thank you for that. All right, uh, back to the data here. We're getting close to the end. Next up is the Hampton, last but not least, definitely not least, least, the Hampton Inn in Wheeling, West Virginia. Now, you might be thinking, Doug, why in the world are you talking about a Hampton Inn in West Virginia? Well, I stayed in this Hampton Inn back in 2021, and when I got there out in front, it said something like, we've been voted the best Hampton Inn in America four out of the last five years or five out of the last seven years, something like that. And I looked it up. They're telling the truth. It was like 2017, 2019, 2020, something else, you know. They actually have an award. It's called the Connie Award. It's named after Conrad Hilton. And I suppose if you shorten that name, Connie, and like every chain gets an award. So like there's the best Hilton ever, uh, best Conrad every year, the best Hampton Inn, the best home to suites every year. This particular Hampton Inn has won that award several times. And my word, look at that, 4.8 stars out of five on Google. Do you know how hard it is to get 4.8 stars for a Hampton Inn? And there's over 1,300 reviews, so it's not a fluke. Now, I only stayed there one night just because I needed a place to stay. You can see in the picture, they have an indoor hot tub and pool. They have an outdoor hot tub. And the indoor pool is sort of more like an aquatic center. There's these buttons you can push and like rain falls out of the ceiling into the pool. So like if kids want to play in the falling rain, they can. The mom and dad can sit in the indoor hot tub while watching the kids play. There's a couple rooms here in the background. One of them is like a rainfall room if you just want to go in and have this like immersive shower. And then I read since I stayed there in 2021, they added a kid's splash pad outside. So it's almost like there's a small water park inside this Hampton Inn. I digress. Oh, and there's this really awesome restaurant across the street that's like all about sports memorabilia. Um, September 13th and 14th this year, you could get the One King Study. It's probably the One King Suite, and I just, for some reason, spelled it wrong. <laughs> uh, you could pay $239 in cash, or you could pay 40,000 points, 0 0.6 cents per point. Uh, QC man said, were you in Wheeling for something else or did you go specifically to experience that Hampton? No, um, the historic Wheeling suspension bridge is what I went to see. And I made a driving with Dugras video um, about it. But I just kind of stumbled across the world's best Hampton Inn or America's best Hampton Inn by mistake. <coughs> oh, sorry, folks. All right, so here's the averages. We have Home to Suites Tallahassee, 1.2, the Curio Gale South Beach, 0.59, the Conrad in D.C., 0.62, the Hampton Inn in O'Fallon, Illinois, 0.64, the Hawaiian Village Waikiki, 0 0.93, the Embassy Suites in Anchorage, Alaska, 1.2, the Hampton Inn, Clinton, Iowa, 1.0, and the best Hampton Inn in America in West Virginia, 0.6 cents per point. Sorry, my head cuts that off. So these are just domestic. I haven't looked at international yet. Uh, this comes to a tentative community average of 0 0.85 cents per point. Now, uh, YouTube Experiment says cherry picking the best Hiltons across America. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. And I fully admit this is cherry picking. So I wrote the word tentative because I asked myself this question. Do I feel comfortable assigning a community value? This is for people that are into points and miles and know what they're doing of 0 0.85 cents per point. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. And now that I've glowed over all these Hiltons, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. This cherry picking took a lot of work. There are a lot of properties out there. Somebody else mentioned in, in the comment section um, where it's 0.5 or worse. And it does seem to be worse when you're in kind of that mid-range area, uh, like the embassy suites, the garden inns, those kind of things. 
Whereas the lowest end, the Hamptons seem to have, it's easier to find a higher sense per point. Some of them are terrible, don't get me wrong. If you go to the real high-end places and pick high-end rooms, those are also terrible value. Um, but on some of the high-end, lower, like ordinary rooms, you can get good value. So it's kind of all over the place, and you just got to really know what you're doing. Uh, that Waikiki Resort in Hawaii, if I got like a two-room suite, there was one that came out to like 0.2 cents per point or less. I mean, it was just trash. Oh, hey, we got 44 people on board. We broke the record again. Um, not just trash, 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 right, Sledge? Um, so I think if we call it a cherry picking average, I'm okay to say 0.85. Um, but if we just say an average or a reasonable redemption, that's too high. I think reasonable redemption, I need to be down around 0.7 or maybe slightly under. Um, but for a cherry pick community average, I'm okay to say 0.85. So tentatively, this is just domestic. I acknowledge I need to look at international. I'm okay to say 0.85. Now, some of you have been screaming this. What about fifth night free? I'm aware of fifth night free. So <laughs> if you take the same exact numbers with fifth night free factored in, the tentative fifth night free average comes out to almost exactly 1.0 cents per point. Now you can see in the bottom left corner down here, I wrote 1.0594 because that's what the math actually came out to. But with rounding rules, I should technically round up to 1.1, but one set per point is just way easier to remember. So uh, I guess the conclusion I've tentatively come to and I'm willing to change my mind uh, is 0.85 if you don't factor in fifth night free and one cent per point on the button if you do factor in fifth night free. Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There's lots of other reasons why you, why you might want to stay in a Hilton that don't get reflected in the cents per point average, and I'm fully aware of that. Uh, one is the dining or food and beverage credit. So I think by now we all know, and I'll mention it just in case, if you are a gold member or higher, like all you have to do is have a pass or an Aspire, either one, um, I think the business card has retained its gold membership. If you have the Amex Platinum, you get gold membership. If you've attained gold status or better, you get free breakfast outside the United States and you get a food and beverage credit within the United States, which can range anywhere from $15 up to $30. Um, and I think they apply that to up to two people. Now, I'm hoping because like when we go to Washington, D.C., we'll have two rooms. Well, that's a bad example because I'm staying in a embassy suite where everybody gets free breakfast. But uh, let's say I went to a... Um, garden in. If I got two rooms, I'm pretty sure it would be 15 times two for mom and dad's room, 15 times two for the boys room. Um, so that's something you'll want to factor in. Uh, when we were in London, that made a huge difference. Four days in a row of a free breakfast. And it was a very nice breakfast, probably saved us 60 bucks every morning. Um, when I went to Peoria, Illinois, which is not a fancy place at all, I got free breakfast at a Holiday Inn. And I know holiday is not part of Hilton. I, I understand. I'm just making a point that free breakfast would have been, or that breakfast would have been 45 bucks. So that alone saved us 45 bucks. I mean, frankly, I'm not sure you can feed two adults and two hungry teenagers at McDonald's for 45 bucks nowadays. All right. So I'm going to try my best to catch up here in the comments. Oh, um, the other reason why you might like Hilton is because of the quality. I have found that even a lowly Hampton Inn, you're almost always going to get at least like a baseline quality. You know, you're probably not going to leave anything worse than a three-star review. Whereas it feels like with, you know, a La Quinta or a Wyndham or a Super 8, you might get a nice one, but you might also get a turd. Um, Country Inn, it feels like the quality stays a little higher with Hilton. And there's something to be said about that. And then a benefit having kids that I really like is their guaranteed connecting rooms, 
when you're booking online, you can click a button for connecting rooms and be sure you get that. That's kind of a big deal for our family. Uh, my son has uh, juvenile diabetes and he wears a blood sugar monitor. 99% of the time he's fine. But if that goes off in the middle of the night and we have to treat in an urgent situation, I don't want to go out in the hallway, find his room and come back in. I want the room to be right there. All right. So now I'm going to try to catch up on the comments here. Sorry that it took me so long. Um, Anthony Venture says, oh, I've heard of this Hampton and he must be talking about the one in West Virginia. I wanted to make a video there. People keep telling me it's the best one. Stan says the Connie award as in aunt Connie. We all have an aunt Connie says frugal dead. Um, John says, I like to hear about smaller places and towns. There's so much more to see in the beautiful country outside of all the cities. I like seeing these Dugras. Yeah. So like the rolling hills and small mountains of West Virginia were very beautiful. Five out of five would recommend. Um, Robert Wingarder, Wingader is online. Hi, happy to see you, Robert. Don't think we've met before. If you're not cherry picking with Hilton, you're doing it wrong. I value these at one cent per point. Cesar also says that's how I value them 0.85 at least with my type of travel. Luke says, Are there folks out there that are staying in randomly generated locations, or do we all cherry pick every single stay we do? And I mean 100% every single time I've actually picked where I stay. I think so, Luke. I mean, uh, why wouldn't, you know, I agree with you 100%. I mean, if people give the criticism, you're just cherry picking, I would say, well, of course I'm cherry picking. Why wouldn't I? Now, there's a couple situations where it doesn't make sense. For example, you know, if I'm staying one night in... Albia, Iowa on a roadside trip and I'm getting in at 9 p.m. and leaving at 6 a.m. If my choices are a Hampton Inn for 30,000 points or an Embassy Suites for 100,000 points, I'm not going to pick the Embassy Suites just because the cents per point is higher. But that's that's a situation where you could do something like your Aeroplan card and just pay with... Um, cash in a roundabout way or if you've saved up some cash in a travel savings account that's that's the time to use cash um since you can buy i did the math in my members only video and the math the way it came out to was like if the value is 0.47 or less you should always use cash just from a mathematical point of view but we all know you can buy in at half a cent per point. So really anything less than half a cent per point, uh, definitely pay with cash if you have it. Um, if you are between like 0.5 and 0.7, there's sort of a gray area. Uh, 0.7 or more, I would probably use points. But I'm going to be looking for something that's at least 0.85. Uh, Cesar says we should cherry pick every redemption. Um, John says he picks his own place every time he wants to stay. FN5, Five Nights at Freddy's? No, Fifth Night Free. Um, Cesar thinks the Fifth Night Free and dining credits are powerful. Anthony Venture says, I just super value the dining credits and use them for dinner with the Hilton brands that gave it. So even if it's 0.5 cents per point, it could easily be 50% more value just for that, for me personally. Robert says Embassy Suites has a free happy hour too, right? Yes. Now I went, I stayed two nights at Embassy Suites in January in the suburbs of Chicago, and their happy hour was like fruit punch, um, some pre-made tortilla chips with some eh, lousy salsa, and some room temperature churros. So I mean, it was okay, and I guess. If I had little kids, like under age nine, they would probably be happy with room temperature churros. So I'm not complaining, but it's not something I'm going to hang my hat on. Luke says, the food and beverage credit is maxed out two people. Your status won't get you more credits even when booking more rooms. Oh, that's a bummer. I was hoping it was per room, not per booking. Um, Stan says, I don't cherry pick my hotel stays. I stay where I want to stay but I do make a sense per point evaluation to make a judgment call first. 
And between having, you know, maybe two to three hotel programs you like and the cash option, even if you're not cherry picking by getting high cents per point, like let's say I'm flying to, oh, I want to go see Stan in California. So I'm staying in Sacramento or something like that. Uh, and I like Hyatt, Hilton, and IHG. And then I have the cash option in my back pocket. Surely between those four options, I can find at least decent cents per point. Juan Garcia says, I max out on buying Hilton points at half a cent each and use it for high-end properties, such as the Waldorf, Astoria, Orlando. Awesome. Um, Icarus says, I want to do an ambulance tiny home conversion. No hotels ever again. That would be cool. It's not something in my wheelhouse, but if it works for you, go for it. Robert Wynn Gator says free wine and beer too, talking about the NBC Suites happy hour. Um, you're right. Now that I think about it, in addition to the room temperature churros, <laughs> they also gave um, one free drink coupon for every adult in the party. Since I only had one adult in the party, it was one per night. So I could have gone to the on-site hotel and gotten a free uh, beverage of some kind. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. I didn't, but I could have. I don't, I'm not much of a drinker. Um, Filmo says, my big choice today while I watch Andaz or Waldorf in Amsterdam. Ah, points and miles. Boy, sounds like either of those is pretty awesome, Filmo. Uh, Luke has some tips about that. And Stan says, there's more that goes into my judgment than just cents per point. It's a good metric, but not the only thing. Location, convenience, and status all play a factor. Do I have my little thing I wanted to mention here? I do not. Sometime remind me to do a review of when going for higher cents per point actually doesn't make sense. But I'll give you like one brief example. So like... Um, I was debating between the embassy suites and the Conrad in uh, Washington, D.C., and I settled on the embassy suites. It was actually slightly lower in cents per point. Not a lot. You know, we're talking like 0. 0.8 versus 0. 0.9, something like that. Um, but when I think about subjective factors like staying with kids, having larger rooms, the Conrad might be too fancy for two teenage boys from central Iowa. I don't know. Their restaurant seemed like um, the one in the Embassy Suites suited the type of eating we liked better. Um, the free happy hour with snacks, those kind of things. It just seemed like Embassy Suites was probably a better fit for us. Now, don't get me wrong. If it was just me and Mrs. Dugras, it would have been the Conrad. Like I said, we'll walk across the street and check out the hotel. But yeah, I'm not going to say, well, in order to get better sense per point, I'm going to... Um, stay at a place I don't want to stay. I almost fell for that once when we went to England last year. I was looking at cottages.com, which you can use with Wyndham points. And there was a place that was like super awesome in cents per point. It was like on a historic property, like an old manor house you could stay in. Um, it was fancy, but it was like really far away from the things we wanted to do. And it looked very hoity-toity. And I was like, oh man, but this is like, it was like seven cents per point. Um, so, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to take this lodge in Wales, which is only three or four cents per point. And I'm glad I did. Cause how stupid would it have been to go to a place that I don't really want to stay in just to get higher cents per point. Um, Sam K says, did you feel anything from the reported earthquake? I did not, um, you know, the United States is a pretty big country and I think the earthquake was out on the East coast and I'm in the middle of the country. So didn't feel a thing. QC man wants me to give my boys more credit for their sophistication. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what sophistication. All right. That concludes the main event. Thank you everyone for staying on board throughout all of that. I'm going to pop out my dashboard here and we are ready to transition into the community tab. So I will do that here. Sorry, it takes a long time to load folks and I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and take our intermission here. 
Um, yeah, it is record player time. Take our first intermission. I'll be back in about 90 seconds. Some of you will see a commercial and some of you will just see an empty chair. Stay tuned. All right, did you stare at the wall or did you um, get an ad? Let me know. By the way, I want to again go back to thanking both Filmo and Sam K for their super thanks of a five spot each. Um, you don't have to give a five spot. You're more than welcome to give a smaller amount. A uh, dollar would be totally fine. Interestingly, I haven't figured out why YouTube lets you give the amounts that you give. Uh, for me personally, on my computer, I can give almost any amount. I think you have to go in like 10 second, in 10 cent increments, and it always ends in a nine. So like uh, 99 cents, a dollar and nine cents, a dollar 19 cents. One time I gave uh, Chad from Chad's Money Minute, I think $1.89. <laughs> and he looked at me kind of funny, like that's a weird amount uh, to buy a taco. Um, so if you want to test it out, I'm not going to stop you. What's what's the weirdest or smallest amount, like under $2 it'll let you give? Like, will it let you give less than a dollar? I'm just curious. All right. So let's see. Um, <laughs> Filmo thinks I should put me and the misses in the Conrad and the boys in a best Western across the street. Robert got an empty chair. YouTube experiment uh, got an empty chair. Uh, Icarus has premium. Let's see. JP knowledge says hotel location is highly important to me. I like being in high rises, but being able to catch the train only a few yards from the hotel is clutch. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to sleep in the lobby or something like that. Right. JP. Um, John stared at the wall. Uh, I stayed at a Hyatt place in Normal, Illinois, which was right next to the Amtrak station. And that is a super convenient location. So uh, I, I was riding Amtrak. If I ever had to ride Amtrak through there again, I would definitely stay there. Uh, John and Keith were both staring at the wall. Sam says, you could YouTube could be so sly to add advertising to people's accounts, even with paid subscriptions. Um, can they be trusted not to? Um there's a love-hate relationship that goes on there, that's for sure. Um, zing! Okay, back to actually some productive conversation here. Thank you for the 37 of you that stayed on board. Um, I need to uh, open up my photo for the community tab and my phone. Pull that out of my back pocket. Not a lot of comments or questions on the community tab this week, but let's go ahead and get there. Might be a brief lag while I do that.
Here we are. So every Friday, I put something on the community tab with two purposes. One is you can ask me anything, and then I will usually share a picture, and you can guess where the picture was taken. So let's go ahead and go through these in reverse order. Here's the picture, and no one actually successfully, well, one person guessed where it was. I take that back. They did it in kind of coded language. Um, the name is L-I-H-S-I-A-N-G-L-I-N-6698. Uh, I'm going to just guess. Lia Sanglin guesses ISU. That's an abbreviation for Iowa State University. Let's go Cyclones. And absolutely, that is correct. Thank you for uh, that correct guess. That building in the background is called the Campanile at Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. That's right in the middle of university campus. My son was there last weekend for his chess tournament. If you caught my uh, live stream last week, you'll notice it was a very different location than usual. Uh, somebody else guessed the tallest building in Vermont. That is not the tallest building. <laughs> the tallest building in Vermont. Um, Cesar Joel asked this question. With your travel style, what cents per point value do you give Hilton points? Well, that's a good question, Cesar. How about 0.85 if you're not using Fifth Night Free and one per point if you are? Uh, he says, in my case, I've never redeemed for less than 0.8 of a cent, but I've done a couple of more than one cent. Keep up the great work, brother. Thank you, Cesar. That kind of ties in with what we've already discussed. And I uh, don't know if I have a lot more to say other than uh, I will agree with uh, JP and a few other people who said things like, you do have to give some consideration for location. And my story about almost falling for staying in a place I didn't want to stay in the United Kingdom. Um, John says, being a diehard means sticking around through a bio break. Icarus says I should play a record during intermission. Oh, that's a really good idea. Thank you, Icarus. Sam K guessed in a field. Yeah, it is it's in a field next to the college campus. Um, QC man 2000 asked this question, your opinion on how much the visa or MasterCard potential settlement will actually negatively affect credit card rewards. It definitely won't kill it as some alarm has suggested, but are you concerned it will have a significant negative impact? Um, I'm not concerned it'll have a significant negative impact. Thank you for asking that quality control man. Uh, I am concerned just a, just a little, not very much. So if I understand correctly, um, the settlement agrees for MasterCard and Visa to reduce their fees by 0 0.04, 0 0.04. In other words, four basis points, uh, something like over the next three or four years. I don't think that'll affect sign-up bonuses, those kind of things. I, I could see a few outlier cases where like... Um, you know, some card that gives 2x on everything takes it down to 1.5x or something like that. I could see some credit card companies using it as an excuse, um, but I don't think it's going to hurt that much. Good question, though. Thank you. Now, I could be wrong. I'm not an economist. Scott S., who is a diehard, says this. Would you say Embassy Suites is the best hotel for travel with little kids because most rooms are two-bedroom suites? I've noticed choice hotels often have suites, but not all are true suites and have only a room divider. I've noticed Hyatt is good when there's a suite available, but their footprint is much smaller. I've noticed that residence inns, standard rooms, are only studios. Do you know of anyone that has had success booking a room of any chain on points and then offering to pay for a larger room upon arrival? Keep up the great work, Dugras. Uh, thank you. That, that's a great topic. And, you know, we could probably do a whole video on traveling with children. If I'm answering those questions in reverse order, I don't know if anyone's had success booking a room on points than offering to pay for a larger room upon arrival, like paying the difference. Um, I suppose it's possible. That's part of the reason I love Hilton is because of the guaranteed connecting rooms. And with my kids being the age that I, they are, I've pretty much just accepted the fact that if all four of us are going, we're getting two separate rooms and we're going to look for connections. In fact, in both the United Kingdom and Sweden, um, and I don't know if this is nationwide or if it just varied by the town, but we had to get two separate rooms in London 
um, because with fire code occupancy regulations, they would only allow three people in one room. Um, so like when we stay at the Hilton London Tower Bridge, uh, we had to get two separate rooms, which I, I would have wanted to do anyway, but it was actually mandated. Uh, in Sweden, we were able to kind of get around that because they had a room that was designed for four people. Um, but there are situations where you have to get two rooms. And I just try to make two rooms as painless as possible. Now, if I'm traveling with just the three of us, me and my two boys, if the missus is not able to go, then I'm with you. It does drive me bonkers when something says it's a suite uh, but it's not really a suite, like a one bed suite. And they have like one of those half walls that kind of juts out or like a curtain or sort of like a low wall. And there's a big open window. No, the whole reason I want a suite is so I can go in that back room and close the door and preferably lock it because I don't want my kids coming in. Um, so I do think embassy suites is probably the best because most of their rooms have an actual bedroom where you can go in and close the door um booking with choice my son and i stayed at a radisson once that had a actual suite with a closing locking door um you can find them with holiday inns and holiday inns expresses but you kind of have to read the reviews um that reminds me if you are in the points and miles community you should always leave a review for the hotel you stay in, even if there's nothing particularly compelling, because that's how you help out other people and give details if possible. For example, if I book a suite, I try my best to take a picture of like the door that goes between the outer room and the bedroom and comment on whether it's an actual suite or a fake suite, because sometimes it's really hard to tell. Like you're looking at the picture on your phone and like, is that a, is that a closing door in the background? I can't tell. And that just gets really really obnoxious. So I do think probably Embassy Suites is the safest bet. It's not the only bet, but yeah, if anybody has any tips on that, put it in the comment section. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate that. And I think that is it in terms of the community tab. I think it was just uh, QC Man, Scott, the uh, Liang, Singlin, and Cesar. Thank you all. I appreciate that. Um, Icarus says I should play a record during intermissions and also says, did you know if you play records during intermission, those records are tax deductible? Oh, well, that's a good point. Now, one thing I would be a little concerned about is um, getting a copyright strike. Uh, I'd have to make sure it's an obscure enough record. It's not in YouTube's database. When I was in Wheeling, West Virginia, which ended up being my most popular driving with Dugras video, I was playing music in the background and it was like old timey music from like the thirties, forties, fifties, that kind of thing. There was one song on there that was sung by Frank Sinatra. Now Frank Sinatra wasn't popular in the forties, but he would occasionally sing older types of songs. Um, so it made it into the compilation and it was, I don't remember how it goes, but there's this one line that's like the warm September of my years. Well, YouTube picked out that one song and said, this is copyrighted. You're not allowed to monetize this video. All the profit goes to whoever holds the copyright of that song. So for a long time, I didn't make any revenue. And eventually I figured out you can use a little thing to exclude a piece of audio. Um, so I now get it. But like, I wouldn't be able to make any money on my live streams if they picked up on a copyrighted song. So I'd have to be really careful about that. Icarus says, call the hotel and ask if their suite is real or fake. I've done that before. Uh, Sam Case says, stock up on your United Kingdom Cadbury eggs before returning to the U.S. Yep, I've heard they're a lot better over there. Um, Icarus says, you can avoid copyright strikes by playing classical music. That's true if it's old enough that it's in the public domain. QC Ben asks, even as an Iowa State fan, you're rooting for Caitlin Clark as an Iowa native, I'd guess. Um, Low level. I did watch the last two games in the women's uh, Elite Eight and Final Four. I'm interested. I don't know if I'd call it rooting, but I'm interested. Um, I'm not going to lose one moment of sleep if they get eliminated, but I've got lots of friends that root for Iowa women's basketball, so I guess I'm kind of commensurate with that. JP asks, do you buy Hilton points? I have in the past, um, or have I? 
No, I've only bought IHG points. I don't think I've ever bought Hilton points. I don't have a problem buying Hilton points. I just don't think I've ever done it. I might be wrong. I might have bought like a real small, small grouping. I might have bought like 30,000 points at one point. I don't really remember, but I'm very willing to. Jesus is here. How you doing, Jesus? Says, the warm September of my years. Dugras, you just self-copyrighted this video. I I don't think the system's going to pick up on <laughs> me singing that song. All right, let's move on. I do have some... Hey, we're back up to 42 people. Thanks, everyone. Click the thumbs up button. And uh, if you're willing to throw me the uh, smallest possible super chat that it'll let you throw me. Uh, see if we can get below 89 cents. Um, Time permitting, extra stuff. But we got a few minutes before I need to wrap things up here. Um, I'll talk about bank account bonuses. So I just want to mention I did hit two bank account bonuses recently. Uh, bank account bonuses, in other words, you open a new bank account, you meet certain requirements, and they throw you some cash. Uh, both of the ones I'm going to mention were direct deposit related. So you had to open the account, make so many direct deposits, a certain threshold in terms of number per month, duration. I don't remember the details and they give you a welcome bonus. Uh, one of them was with Northwestern Federal Credit Union. That's a credit union based out of Herndon, Virginia. And that one just posted earlier, or like late March, that was $390. Seems like a strange amount. It's actually $400, um, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I don't know where that came from. I apologize. One moment, folks. Asthma break. <coughs> Man, you guys must think I have a lung disease or something. I guess technically asthma is a lung disease, <laughs> but I don't have pneumonia. I don't have COPD. Uh, hey, Robert Wingarder. Win. Gator, when Gatter dropped me five dollars, I really appreciate that. It says, Nice live, Doug. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much, Robert. I much appreciate that. Ready for a totally random comment? So, there was a Nintendo game called based on the old TV show. I'm talking the original Nintendo, the NES, the gray cartridges. Um, and the bad guys in that game were called the Wingates. So every time I see your name, I keep wanting to say Robert Wingate. If I've mispronounced it, Robert, I apologize. Um, hey, and Manuel Jimenez, one of the diehards, uh, has dropped a dollar ninety nine. That's, uh, I think, for both of you, the first. Yeah, for both of you, that is the first super chat. So thank you so much. Here comes Jesus with a four spot and a picture of a cup of coffee. Love it. Thank you so much, Jesus. I really appreciate. Your patronage. So the I, I guess if there's an award for the smallest live chat, it goes to Manuel at $1.99. Wingate is also a hotel. And Robert says everyone says it differently, LOL. Well, thank you for understanding if I mispronounce it. Anyway, where I was going with that is a $400 bank account bonus that I got from Northwestern Federal Credit Union. Oh, hey, 45 people were on at the same time. We broke our record again briefly, very briefly. Dropped back down to 44. Um, 45 people at the same time, new record. It's a record breaking day. Thank you, everyone. That's awesome. Um, $400 sign up bonus, but in order to join the credit union, you either have to live or work in Virginia, Washington, DC or surrounding areas, or you can make a donation. So I made a $10 donation to the Appalachian trail conservancy and, uh, they let me in. So I had to deduct that $10 from the sign up bonus. $390. And then Citibank does kind of the same bonus pretty regularly. Here's my Citibank debit card. I had to direct deposit, I think, a total of $1,500 over 90 days, and they gave me $300. So put those two together, got $390 from Northwestern Credit Union, $300 from Citi, and I have a new, fresh $690 going into my travel savings account. Um, hey, Sam K was able to drop one pound and John was able to drop $1 for science. John says he saw 46 people in the chat. I didn't see that, but that would also be the new record. So 
up above, um, JP had asked if I buy Hilton points and then says, did I do it with your cash back earned? Yes, that's correct. So the whole reason why I have this separate cash back savings account, and I run it through Charles Schwab, if you're wondering, um, is because, as you know, and you mentioned this on your live stream, JP, I appreciate it. My philosophy is because I have a family, I can't justify dipping into my family budget. And it took a while. But after four years, I got to the point where I'm able to self-fund all my adventures. So anytime I earn a bank account bonus, it goes into that travel savings account. Anytime I earn pure cash back, uh, for example, like um, a card that doesn't have transfer partners, um, my U.S. Bank Cash Plus card, my U.S. Bank Triple Cash rewards, uh, my new State Farm business card, my... Um, American Express blue cash every day. When I earn cash back on those cards, that goes into my travel savings account. And then that is used for anything that points and miles can't cover. So if you watch, like, as an example, my video of when I went to Chicago, it was not a very popular video. First week in January, I do a spreadsheet of every single penny I spend on my travels, and I pay for as much as I possibly can with points or my aeroplan trick, or my U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve, but you can't pay for everything with points. You can't pay for McDonald's with points. Uh, you can't pay for gas with points directly. I have to dip into that travel savings account. So when I bought ISG points, yes, it came out of that travel savings account. When I pay my annual fees, it comes out of that travel savings account. It had gotten kind of low, so I'm glad that it's going back up by another $690. That will definitely help. Sub Someday I intend to do a video about like all of my accounting for paying credit cards and those kind of things. I just haven't got around to it yet. All right. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Juan Garcia, $2. <laughs> uh, Anthony Venture, 99 cents. Awesome. There, the number 20 is next to Anthony Venture. Oh, it says, let's celebrate Anthony's 20th super on a live stream. Not my live stream, but on a live stream. Thank you so much, Anthony, for the 99 cents. Thank you for Juan Garcia for the $2. So, yes, Anthony, you win the lowest donation award. Uh, if anybody can come in with 89 cents, they will take over you. Juan says, great info and perspective as usual. Time permitting, one more uh, success story I wanted to mention here. It's always good to find out when one of your children does something awesome. Uh, in a way, you can also have points and miles children or apprentices or Padawans or whatever you want to say. As I've mentioned on some of my member-only videos, I don't really try to proselytize anyone to points and miles. But if somebody wants to listen in, I am happy to uh, share with them the joy of points and miles. So... Uh, a young fella from my church, a guy in his 20s, um, has watched some of my videos. And whether or not it was because of me or it's it's just supplemented by me, but he's gotten really into points and miles in the last year and a half or so. Now, he's mostly just doing chase stuff, uh, using the chase portal or transferring to Hyatt. Uh, but if that's all you ever do, you're still ahead of 99% of the population. He had to fly on a very specific day and was looking for a way to use points and miles when cash rates were really high. Uh, he had to go help a family member, and it was like he was driving a car down, dropping it off in Kansas, and you know needed a way to get back to Des Moines. Uh, but obviously, he was dropping the car off, and he was flying from Manhattan, Kansas, which is sort of in the middle of Kansas. It's where Kansas State is located. Um <laughs> And there's not a lot of flights. American is the only airline that flies out of there regularly. And the cash rates were really high. So let's let's actually show you. I took a screenshot here. And I think I found the right flight here. If not, please forgive me. Sorry, wait for the screen to load here. Someday I'll have a new computer. I've really bumped up my Super Chats here. Thank you, everyone. I really, really appreciate it. There we go. Okay. 
Um, or wait. Seeing this? Oh, it's just super slow. Okay, now you should be seeing it. So uh, this is the cash rate, the top one, 693 to fly from Manhattan, Kansas to Des Moines, Iowa, $693. And I suggested he try the trick that goes from British to uh, American. And at first it didn't work. Um, but I said, you know, sometimes they will open a ward space as you get close. So sure enough, with about seven to 10 days left, they opened up two more award tickets, and for 12,500 points, he was able to snag this flight right here. So if we take 643 and divide it by 12,500, well, I didn't subtract out the $5.95 9-11 fee, but that comes out to 5.1 cents per point. I think he said it was over 4 cents per point. Either way, you know. Man, I would much rather pay 12,500 British Airlines miles transferred from Chase plus $5.943. So I call that a big win. It's fun to see when other people have success in the world of points and miles and really start to see what they are worth. Icarus says, I donated the suggestion to get the State Farm business card. That's true. Thank you, Icarus. I appreciate it. By the way, that $200 deductible reimbursement benefit doesn't require state farm policy. It's any policy. Interesting. Um, but you also have to make, I think, eight purchases every month because you never know when you're going to get an accident. And they'll check to make sure you made at least eight purchases in the prior month. So still trying to decide if I uh, want to do that or not. John was able to see it. Philmo says, converting those normies. Oh, look, 47 people. We are breaking records left and right today. Da, 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 da. Well, I wish I had more uh, prepared content. Things are going so well, but I don't, and I don't want to be the kind of guy that just rambles on. So um, unless somebody has last-minute questions, we will wrap it up. Thank you for all the super chats. If somebody wants to drop in another 99 cents or $2, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. In fact, it really helps. I think this video will probably pick up a lot of traction with ad revenue, which will really help me get towards that computer fund. So guys, I appreciate it so much. I have started something of a tradition of ending my uh, live streams with what's on my record player. So I'll do that here. This is called Mancini Plays the Great Academy Award Songs. Henry Mancini is the composer. There he is. Copyright date is 1964. And these are all songs from My Fair Lady. Uh, a lot of these other ones. When You Wish Upon a Star is Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio. Uh, I really like this. This is uh, old time soundtrack music. Hey, John put $4.70 in the super chat for 47 views. Thank you, John. I really, really appreciate it. I'll go through one more time and try my best to mention everyone who did a super chat. If I miss you, I sincerely apologize. Uh, Sam K gave five pounds. Filmo gave $5. I don't see it. I'm almost confident it's in here somewhere. There it is. Filmo gave $5. And then once we started getting into the contest for who could give the smallest amount, we had a whole bunch all together. Uh, Robert Wingate gave $5. Win Gardner gave $5. Sorry, Robert. Manuel Jimenez gave $1.99. Jesus gave $4. Sam K gave one pound. John gave $1. Anthony Venture gave 99 cents and won the Frugality Award. Juan Garcia gave $2. Thank you, Juan. And then John came back and gave another $4.70. Filmo says, congrats again on the new number. Thank you, Filmo. I appreciate that. Remember, you do still have a chance to join as a Dugras diehard if you want to see that members-only video with the math on how I did my calculations. For Hilton, just go to any of my, my videos and click the join button. I don't think it works um, in the video while it's live. I think you have to go to a non-live video and click the join button. I'll let you go.
Oh, um, hopefully I'll see some of you in Ziegler, Illinois on Monday around 1.30 p.m., uh, but I'll try my best to live stream either way. I don't know if it's going to be just me all by myself, two people, three people, or 12 people. Who knows? But regardless, may your spending be frugal and may your points be plenteous. Thanks for watching, everyone. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, Mr.